Well, that was great. First of all, I'm going to introduce myself. We're getting too far here. Um, my name is Wayne Cochran. I'm the Graduate Student Success Coordinator in the Graduate College. Um, I don't necessarily run the showcase, but we are trying to provide um, support for students as you go into this. I do work with a three-minute thesis. I know a couple of you in here have gone through that program before. And in a lot of ways, that overlaps. So what I'm going to try to do today is kind of give you some ideas as to things I've seen students do in the showcase. Uh, things that we've identified kind of in the, the pitching process for 3MT, and then just give you some basic guidelines as kind of how to communicate. Um, and maybe get you guys to ask some questions too. So I guess first off then, they may want to be brave enough to tell me, were there any challenges in in conveying your your, uh, your work to someone else off the cuff like that? What were, what were some of the challenges you, you faced, that you felt as you shared? In a specific setting or like? Just, just in this, well, yeah, just in general, maybe we've come up before, or in this particular moment right now, where I just tossed you into the fishbowl and said, go. Yeah, so people uh, usually mix, uh, mix up the things like the, the what it says, the similar topics, I'm going to talk about them. Okay. For example, uh, for my research, uh, I work with the review comments, which involves the feedback, and the people often understand, even from my computer science, the domain that people understand, oh, it's the source code comments, which is written by the author or the reviewer. So yeah, this, this is pretty common. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? I think just going from like transitions okay. from um, you know, introduction to significance methods. Okay. And admittedly, you guys just have two more weeks, you'll have that honed kind of what, what fits where, so you won't necessarily be off the cuff with everything. But did anybody find themselves thinking about something that has to be in their speech, but they left it out when they were forced with, I've got to do this right up right now on the fly. Maybe not, maybe that's, maybe that's too in the weeds there, but I'll highlight that, uh, that, you know, that you're gonna, especially in the showcase, you're gonna talk to a lot of people who are not gonna be involved in your field, as you say. And you're gonna have to make sure that someone like me, who you talk, start talking to me about computer code, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, here goes my hands. I'll, I'll stick with you as long as I can, but in that instance, yeah, you're going to have to find a way for me to connect with that, which is the challenge that all the students face. Um, yeah, there are going to be some people that come by that are from your discipline, your professors, your cohort, you know, it's going to say, yeah, I'm totally with you on that, I know where you're going with that, that's great work. Uh, but you're also going to have to connect with those people who may come by and just by, that's very interesting, explain that to me. Um, and the key to is to be able to do that in a language that that person understands but also respects the significance of your work as well. I don't, I don't like the phrase dumb it down because it's not really that. It's just an idea of finding a way to communicate with somebody who is on a different level than you. And there are ways to do that. I know I've seen many students who have come in, especially with 3MT and with Showcase, who have looked at me and said, there's no way I can explain that in that amount of time because all the ins and outs, X, Y, and Z, that go into this. And as you get into the process and you hone that down, you start to realize, okay, what's the core part of my, my, my talk? What's the core part of my work? You build that out and then you add in some of the details as you go out until you kind of reach that comfort zone on the outer, outer edge and you kind of know where you are. Um, and ideally then you can also kind of ebb and flow as to who you're talking with. I mean, you'll have the opportunity in this setting, <clears throat> since you'll be in the ballroom in a larger setting, not necessarily on a strict timer, to where you can have some of those conversations and some of those people you might be able to interact with on a more, more intellectual level or on a more uh, specific level as far as your field goes. Um, and some you might not. Um, that's kind of the beauty of the showcase. It's one of the reasons why I like it, because I get to run around and look at all the posters and you know, get into the ones that I sort of understand and then have students challenge me on, well, I don't know what that means, explain it to them. Um, but that's a good exercise as we go through that, just to understand that thing. So I'm gonna introduce this. Most of you can, will understand this. I mean, just kind of some brief slides I put together as we went through this process kind of last year. Obviously, you all know communication is an essential skill for success. You've all done it before. Most of you in this room have done a conference. You've presented in front of your class. You've proposed a topic to your cohort. You've proposed to faculty. Um, I'm going to assume most of the people in the showcase that's not are not brand new to you know presenting their work in a variety of formats. <sighs> but with this, the showcase is the, the, the difference in this, and obviously you communicate, and I've already touched on it a little bit, is you've got to be able to effectively communicate to that broad audience. Um, so we're going to figure out how we do that. There's some common challenges that students might face, and there's ways to overcome them um, when you're in a room with many different people. And yell at me if I go too fast. I'm trying not to. Uh, yeah. Oh, 
So importance. <clears throat> so communication is important for a number of reasons. I mean, first, that's the way we learn. There's lots of different styles of learning, lots of different ways to communicate, but essentially that knowledge has to pass from one to the other in some form of communication. Um, you'll be learning from professors, um, and almost as important, I think, especially with some of these um, presentations you'll do in co competitions like this, you learn as, as, as almost as much or more on some levels from your classmates and your collaborators too. Maybe not, you know, you're obviously working with a certain professor to really get to the top of, of the line, but I found with most of these interactions with a lot of these, when we bring students together, especially across disciplines, <clears throat> there's that initial moment of I don't, I don't quite get what you're working on, but once the, kind of that, that those students kind of meld together and kind of start tossing ideas back and forth, I've also found that sometimes a comment from a fellow student that says, hey, I sort of understood that, but explain that to me again, or have you ever thought about saying it this way? Um, as those go back and forth, that's very valuable information you're going to get, especially from someone who's may not be working in your field, but is going through some of the same challenges that you are in their fields. Um, so I really stress the importance of that, is to, is to get that with your collaborators, your peers, and I'm sure you guys you know, have a lot of trusted students that you work with, and hopefully you'll get a chance, if you haven't already, to work cross-discipline while you're here at Boise State too. Um, but again, you need to understand what they're saying, and then the key part of communication there is if you don't, you ask questions, right? You ask, but I don't understand that, can you explain it to me? Can you expand upon that? <clears throat> Second thing is communication is important for research. I mean, you're all working on research. How many of you are doing thesis or dissertation? Only two. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, you'll know my face pretty well because that's, that's where they all come. I've got a stack of them right now uh, for students who want to graduate. Um, <clears throat> so for a lot of you, for a couple of you, that's, that's the big thing. For some of you who are working on projects, I assume, some of you are doing portfolios. Um, which can be just as involved. I don't want to say those aren't, aren't as involved as the thesis or dissertation. There's some different challenges with that. But <clears throat> you're all conducting research, you're all writing that research in a way that's to, to, to communicate. So there has to be clear on your findings, because obviously you're, you're going to want, the research you present is you saying, I know this topic inside and out. Uh, this is my field, this is, I'm the expert on this field, this is my, my, my area of study. Um, maybe some of you are still working toward that. Maybe it's not a finished product, which is okay as well. We want to highlight research as we go all the way across the spectrum. So if you're, if you're not at that definitive point, that's not necessarily the end thing. But even then, even if you're in the middle of your project, or even maybe you're just beginning, you're in the initial stages, you still know where your project wants to go. You still know what your end game is. Um, and maybe that changes over, over time. But you can still articulate, this is why I think this is important, this is why I'm doing the work I'm doing. Um, <clears throat> and that's, that's valuable to the, to the canon as well. And third, as we'll point out here too, as we've been a couple of times, is networking. Now, I'll be perfectly honest, when I started this job seven years ago, I, networking is a concept that I, have to sh I shy away from sometimes, because it's like, ah, I, you know, you make me go sit in a room and talk to people, or stand up here like this and talk to a bunch of students. Um, but I've learned the value in that, being able to just, just dive in and say, hello, my name is, what are, you know, here's what I'm doing, here, how can I help you today? Um, I meet new people not only in your field, but again, as we said, cross-discipline. I mean, I've noticed in the seven years I've been in the graduate college, I mean, there are obviously lots of disciplines. There's colleges with lots of programs. There's a lot of them that are starting to fuse together in not only like interdisciplinary ways, but also kind of influence each other. Um, so again, I want to stress that cross-discipline, this is an opportunity for you not only to connect with people in your field or even in your college, but across the university as a whole and ideally then as we transfer out, you know, out to the greater public at large as you go out and do whatever's next, whether that's, you know, further in academia or job, teaching, private sector, or public sector, whatever you're going into next, you're going to have a network from here that you've built those relationships out, mentors, collaborators, and hopefully employers. Um, <coughs> whatever that might mean for, for you. <coughs> so hopefully that... I mean, I think all of you probably understand the gist of, of that. I know you wouldn't really be sitting in this room if you didn't, hadn't already embraced the idea of this is something I should do, this is good for me. Um, whether that's, again, you're on your next step or whether that's just something to further yourself while you're here at Boise State. So I, I, I admit that um, having you here today or even watching this video to prepare is going to be that first step toward understanding that concept. Here are some tips that I can give you that I've seen in our various uh, competitions as far as communicating effectively. One is to be clear and concise, which I think 
deep down we all know that, but sometimes that's not the most easy thing to do, especially when you get in and you're talking about all the cool things that you do. Um, it's very easy sometimes to get wrapped up in that and realize that maybe you're going to lose somebody um, jar with, with jargon or a particular thing that you have to go back and explain. So just be clear. Be concise. Make sure your message is clear. Um, you may, The details may vary. You say your details may vary depending on who is standing in front of you in that room. You go to in that window. Um, and I think most of us are smart enough to kind of realize when you're talking to somebody, okay, well, I'm connecting with this person. What is their level of engagement? Are they really super into this and want to know really what I'm doing? Or do they just want, you know, kind of the overview? Where do I have to go to get them to where I need them to be? But the message should be the same, whether you're, you're really heavy jargon for in your field or whether you've kind of spread it out to make it more accessible. The message still has to be there and has to be clear and easy to understand. So we want to try to avoid jargon and technical terms that your audience may turn off on and may, that may turn their attention away from what you're doing. Now, most of you who are working on, especially in women's STEM fields, there are times where you just you can't get away from it. Um, try to minimize those as much as possible, or try to have a, a, a handy um, mnemonic or handy kind of analogy so that you can say, well, you know, this is what this is, and it's, that's the name of it, but it's like this. Um, have that in your back pocket. If you get somebody that looks at you and says, I really want to connect with you on that front, then I'm not sure what that is. Um, and maybe that's, that's easy to do. Maybe you have to struggle at it. Maybe it, there's not a direct comparison. Um, but just try to minimize that whenever possible and keep, that, keep the jargon and the technical terms um, out as much as you can. You'll have a lot more engagement from people in the room, especially those that have just wandered by and think, well, that's a cool poster. Tell me about that. No. Be organized. <coughs> Um, I would suggest having, you know, you'll have your little pitch that you're going to do for your judges. I would, I would recommend having that ready and available to anyone who might stop by. Um, to my knowledge, the way this will work, there's, there's two sessions in, in the ballroom. You either be A or B, and each session is like two hours. So you'll have your poster up, you'll be available. You'll get judged at any point in that two hours. I think there's two or three judges that usually come by. We'll generally try to make sure they're across this one so you're not getting somebody in your field. But they'll come by and they'll, they'll, I think they'll identify themselves as a judge and say, you know, tell me about your project. For them, you're going to want to have that organized three-minute elevator pitch ready to go. Here's my, you know, here's, here's my A to B. Here's why this work is important. Here's how I've organized my thoughts um, as it goes into the poster. And we'll talk about, we'll have the poster lab on Thursday. We'll have um, someone come in and kind of give you an idea of how to put together a poster. So I won't necessarily go into that per se, other than to just say that the organization of the poster and the speech have to kind of come together as one, right? <laughs> I'm not saying it has to be a one for one, like don't say anything that isn't on the poster, but you don't want to have anything necessarily that you're really including in with your message that isn't encapsulated in some way on the, the graphic that you have with you. Um, I don't know the exact formula, but I know there'll be part of it will be judged on the poster and part on the presentation, so they'll come together. Um, and I can work with our staff to maybe get you an idea of how that's broke down, because I li like to have that as, if you can, but we keep that in mind, there's the two halves to that. Being organized will also help you, will help you follow your along uh, where you're at, um, especially in a setting like this where you might talk to 10 or 15 people in an hour. And ideally, probably by the time you get into that, you have your rote speech down, and you make slight, slight tweaks to it here or there. But staying organized will help keep you on that rote too, so when that judge comes by, and is marking you on, on your presentation and your poster. You'll be ready for that as well. And you never know, you might talk to somebody in the room that might lead to another opportunity again in networking. So assume that anybody that stops by and says, hey, tell me about your work, is potentially someone who's gonna follow up with you later and wanna talk to you more about it, right? Good luck doing this in a conversation. So stay organized and on point there so that they can follow your train of thought. Be confident, which I know sounds silly to say, just like you be confident. Um, again, you'll have that window with that poster behind you, that's your space. You own that space. Anybody that comes in and, and engages with you, um, whether that's in passing or with a really serious intent, is coming into your space to learn about your ideas. So own that space. Um, you are the expert in that field, in that, little, in that little bubble in that room. You are the expert that they want to know from you. So I say own it. Don't be nervous about your, your work. You're the expert. You've done the work. You've done the research. You've put together the poster. Um, and anybody that comes by and wants to talk to you is more than likely going to do that out of either just academic curiosity or just like, you know, sure, wow, what is that? I don't think anybody in that room is going to come by and say, ooh, I'm going to see if they really know their stuff, right? 
um, including most of the faculty members in the room. So be confident in that. You'll connect with your audience better. Your message will be more persuasive. Um, and I know that sounds, on some levels, that sounds you know very simple. It's like, yeah, be confident. And it's, it's easier said than done sometimes, especially when you get in there and you do, maybe it's natural for you to just talk to people. Maybe it's not. Uh, but just keeping that in mind and keeping that communication open and confident is, is the key. Be respectful as well. I mean, you're going to be communicating. Ideally, the people that will come across to you will communicate and will engage back. So ideally, this is not designed necessarily for you to be a one-way street where you're just going to give the same speech over and over again. Ideally, you'll get somebody who wants to engage you and ask questions and ask follow-ups and, and just kind of that conversation to Google wherever, wherever it needs to. Um, but be respectful of that communication and that, that, that uh, collaboration. If someone does want to engage you, they also listen to what they have to say as well. Um, and the last point is be, be open to feedback. Um, <clears throat> when you receive feedback and your communication skills, be open with it. I know sometimes that's hard to look at or hard to, to take in when somebody says, well, you know, that was great, but I didn't get, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, that's why I also encourage group of fellow graduates to come together, because let's say that a lot of times when I work with a student on that, I can give notes, I can say, well, here's, you know, here's where you lost me, here's what I would tweak, um, explain this further to me. That's well and good, students really like that. I mean, students as, as a rule like, generally like the feedback, right? Um, when that note comes from a, a faculty member or, or a fellow graduate student, it has a different, different tinge to it, right? And, you know, knowing where that person is. Maybe you don't know the person's background that you're talking to in the showcase environment. <coughs> but, uh, I lost my train of thought for a second, we'll come back. <laughs> but it'll improve your communication skills as you are open to feedback. And if someone says, hey, you know, explain that to me further, or I didn't get that, or have you ever thought about doing it this way, know that that's just someone looking at you and saying, wow, that was really great, but hey, we can make this just a little bit better, right? Those of you who have done 3MT, you know that process pretty well as far as putting that together. Challenges. Um, common communication challenges, obviously public speaking is not everybody's cup of tea. Um, I, I, I use myself as an example. I, mean, I have learned to be in the environment I'm in and to embrace that. Not always my favorite thing to do um, as far as getting in front of people and, and public speaking, but I find the more I, make, I do it, you know, the more comfortable it gets. Um, it's a little easier to slip into that mode as opposed to you know really realizing hey that's not something I like doing. Um, so in that instance, then practice. I mean, practice in front of a mirror. Um, grab your family members, grab a, grab a cohort, be in environments where you can just talk to people and just just practice. Now that sounds pretty simple. It's like you know the idea of just putting your work out there, putting your ideas out there, <coughs> but. Make sure you practice and go look at that. Um, do that prep work going into the showcase as well. Because um, you're going to have, it, there's really is as just a strong half as the actual poster that you're going to put together. Um, there's writing challenges sometimes, and obviously you guys are putting together long and complex assignments, papers. Um, same rule applies here. If you're not a strong writer, um, there are a lot of things you can do. You can come to my office and get help from my coaches. You can go to the writing center. You can ask those in your cohort to help if you need help crafting and if you're working on a script for the showcase and it's just not quite sounding the way you want it to. Um, you know, know that we all have strengths and there are ways for students to improve those skills as we go. Part of the reason to do the showcase as well is to improve those skills. Um, and again, networking, and I'll come back to it again, network comes up quite a bit here as we talk about the showcase here, is that it's not often, sometimes it's hard to do, especially when you don't really know where the in is to get in to start that process. This is gonna be a great example of a lot of people in one space and being able to really embrace that idea of I'm gonna network. I know I've found, as I've done the showcases, I've done a number of career things, it is a lot easier than necessarily plugging in and say, just identify two or three posters. You know, that's what I usually do is identify a few that I wanna to talk to. Um, there are some students I've been working with, with 3MT and with thesis and dissertation, there's a lot of students I already know. So I do tend to check in, you know, what's going on especially the ones whose, whose document is in my pile, so I've seen it already. But I usually identify at least three or four students who I, I don't know, and just tell me, tell me about your work. 
Um, and I'd encourage all of you students as you go, as you get an opportunity, I mean, you'll have your time in front of your poster. If you have an opportunity to get out and walk around the room and engage like that, um, don't be afraid to do that, because like I say, it leads more conversations down the road. That's all I had for slides. I put these together pretty quick. Um, does anybody have any general questions about maybe if something they're working on? Um, I can answer some format questions, maybe not all of them, but I can answer a lot of them. Anything anybody's particularly nervous about for showcase? Adrian? Yeah, so I haven't been to any of them. I don't really know what to expect. Okay. So what does it look like? They, uh, you had mentioned that judges are roaming around uh -huh. and kind of watching you. So uh, <coughs> well, are you like uh, presenting just to any, uh, who's coming up? Does anybody? <laughs> So, general, so the basic setup we'll have that we'll have is we have it's in the Jordan Ballroom. We'll have the whole thing kind of spaced out. There'll be I forget how many rolls of easels there are, but the whole room will be filled with with easels. And then I think we'll have two sessions because it'll take it'll take another that amount of time to get I think about 200 and some students signed up. Um, so half of you will be in one session, half of you in the other. And that you'll literally have the poster behind you in your row. You'll you'll know when you check in where your where your your spot is by number. We'll get you all set up, and then literally the room just opens up, and you have a window, a two-hour window, where you're in front of your poster, and it is literally just anybody that walks through. The graduate college staff will all be there, and we'll close the graduate college and all come over. There'll be a lot of faculty running around that will be invited. I mean, um, and then as far as the judges go, they'll get a little packet when they check in, and it's up to them as to who they who they find first or how they do it. There's no right rhyme or reason necessarily to I'm going a, X, X Y Z. Because I think they try to fit in. I mean, if you're engaging with someone, like if I walked over and I'm talking to you, I think most judges are respectful about he's already engaged with someone, and they'll circle around and come back to you when you're available. Okay, so they're judging you while they're interacting with you, or while they're watching. I believe while you're interacting with you. I don't. I I'll have to ask Lisa on that, but I believe the judging is just, you know, hi, I'm one on one. Okay. And then you're working with that judge for whatever that time is. Okay. Um, I, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, there's no criteria necessarily, but obviously, as they're as they're walking up and they're walking away, yeah. I mean, invariably they're going to pick up things they might notice. Yeah. Well, and I was just going to say, and some judges may identify themselves; others may some not. Some may not. They they'll probably be pretty obvious because they're the ones that are going to have a clipboard. Hold the clipboard with the envelope. Yeah. But just be prepared for that too. Yeah. Some may introduce themselves and some may not. Yeah. Okay. So they will be um, presenting to the judges that come by and then anybody else who comes such as like faculty and staff yeah then other than that yeah there's, you'll have that interaction and then it's just the idea is, is just to open. have people mingle around the room open to anybody in the yep room. okay it'll be open to the public like i say there'll be a lot of people running around from from the university I, we get some people that come in from the public not necessarily a ton but we'll have a few that come in family members and stuff that do but um but then uh, yeah for the rest of that time after you're before you're judging and after you're judging that's kind of on you just to engage with whoever chooses to engage with you. Um, or you can harangue people as they walk by. If you see somebody walk by and elbow your poster a couple of times, reach out and say, hey, I've seen you look at that a couple of times. You know, can I tell you about my project? Um, how long are our pitches? Is there a certain time frame? I believe we're shooting for about three minutes, I think, three is what minutes? you shoot for, yeah. There's no timer on it necessarily like 3MT, but it's oh. ideally about a three minute elevator pitch is oh, what okay. you're looking at. So I mean, if it ends up being three three thirty, you know, no one, no one's gonna be time you with a stopwatch. But um, I say link that to something, an analogy. Link it to something that is really important. Like there's, if you're working on something that's a specific issue that is known to everyone, and you're doing, you like the unique way to solve that. Tie that back to something that the judge can say, okay, I'll hold on to that. Okay, that's that's my that's my hook. I know what he's talking about. And then you have your body where you're kind of describing your work. And then you circle back with the, the finishing then is the circle back and then, okay, well, I know I've told you about my work. Here's why this is important. Here's why I'm studying this. Here's why you should pay attention to my work in that wrap up kind of way. So you kind of, you have the hook at the front and you have that recall at the back to really drive that home to say, okay, here's my framework. If that makes, that make sense? Yes. Okay. And it's a little bit different for each person. Obviously you're going to have different levels. I mean, maybe, maybe some of you have a, and a story that'll take a minute because it's really involved and it's personal and it's really, really resonant. Some of you may have a quick hook that says, you know, hey, have you ever thought about why, why this happens? Um, it'll ebb and flow as far as time-wise, so there isn't necessarily a set time frame, but that's just kind of the basic framework on either end with the body in the middle. And then you'll figure out what fits in that frame or not, because when you practice, 
you'll figure out, kind of start with throwing as much in as you can, time yourself, and the idea is, well, now I know, you know, this, this is too much stuff, and then start taking things out until you get to that, that framework, and then you kind of know kind of what fits and what doesn't. Does that make sense? But that's a great question. I'd say it'll be different for each of you, but that's 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 the way we usually start the process. And I feel like once you start that, a lot of times and you get into it, you'll realize it's like kind of where the wow factors are, right? You'll realize that once you kind of get that down, you have a framework, and then it kind of it goes where it will, so to speak. Yeah. Anything else? Any more questions? Yeah. Is it, um, so I'm assuming it's separate than the three minute thesis in which it's not just a speech that you're giving, or is it like interactive? Like, will they, like, should we expect them to maybe interrupt us and ask questions during it, or? <clears throat> from what I've seen, from most of the judges, most of them will let you give your pitch. Um, I'm sure the differing factor, obviously, a three minute thesis, you give your three and then you walk off and they judge you on what you, what you presented. Like, I got that or I didn't. Um, in this instance, and in that instance, there's no, there's no follow-up question. You don't have a judge shouting at you, you know, that's great, but what about this? Um, in this instance, then, I think you get the follow-up. I think most judges will probably not interrupt you. I hope not. I think the idea is to get, let you give your presentation. Um, I'm sure that when you're done, there will be a follow-up question yeah. or two, because and they may ask you not only about your presentation, but potentially about what's on your poster as well. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, I mean, as we go through, we'll talk about the poster lab on Thursday, but there'll be that element as well. I mean, they'll be mindful of not only your presentation, but how you organize your poster and your research as well, if that makes sense. Um, are there any issues with using the same research that we used from our three-minute thesis for the showcase? No. No, we have lots of students who do both, and there's no. You have more real estate on a poster, so if you wanted to be more expensive, you have the real estate to do so. But no, it doesn't have to be separate research from something you presented at the dream team. Any other questions? Those are really good questions, Adrian. You're making me work from the one today. Everybody else knows what's going on. Does anybody feel nervous about it? Everybody feel pretty confident about it? Or, or are there any pain points that you, you're nervous about putting together? I don't have a pitch yet, but I have okay. a poster that I'm enhancing through these workshops and throughout the week, and then from there I'll tell my pitch, I think. Yeah. I don't know how everyone else is doing it, but. Yeah, good. Maybe a question. No, it's fine. <laughs> Poster limited to strictly like two dimensional image. Is there any sort of interact? I mean, like how sort of free is it to experiment? Mm. We have a standard easel size, so I mean, there is a standard size of the easel. I think it's 36 by 48, mm. something like that. So I mean, you are limited in that capacity. Um, the only thing I would say is if you were having three D, like three D, like something that comes out from the page, just keep in mind it's going to be on an easel, so it's not something you're going to want to have a tip. Um, I don't know that it has to be flat necessarily, but I said that's just the reality. You know, as posters, you're standing face to face. I just want to make sure, yeah, if you did something that was leaned forward enough, I don't want you to spend all afternoon you know, flipping your poster back up. But um, and I can follow up on that to make sure. But to my knowledge, that's the only limitation you have is just the width and the it's the standard standard square. But what you do in that square, I think, is you know, interpretive. And the poster is, is it just is a standard 48 by 36? Thing? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. There, um, when I heard of the poster, it was super thin and flimsy from mm -hmm. the library here. Mm -hmm. Do people usually put those on a back, like on a cardboard? Yes. Or does the library have like the option for a harder, thicker? Go ahead, Adrian. So um, the graduate college, in addition to the easels, provide a, um, a foam backboard. Oh, you guys provide the easels too. Yeah, yep. that was another question. Right. Yes, yep, and then the clips. So all of that will be set up yep. when you come in the room. You'll oh. just take your poster and take those clips and attach the it to the backboard. The poster and you guys have it. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I struggled with that last one. <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah, we'll provide all you have to bring is the, is the poster. We can't do that for you. But other than that, we'll set you up so you're, you'll have a spot for it. Awesome, thank you. Any, any other questions? Yeah. There might be a nurse to be a question. No, not, there's no such thing. <laughs> um, can we like go out of that poster dimension? Or is it recommended to like really stay with it? 
I would recommend, I mean, it, uh, to my knowledge, I mean, if you edge over, I mean, if it's leaning over by a half an inch yeah. or whatnot, I think that's probably fine. If it's too wide, keep in mind these, we have these easels stacked as close together as we can. So if you go beyond that, that edge, chances are you're going to be in front of your competitor on either side. So I would say, I mean, if it's a tiny fraction, it's probably okay. But if it's something really major, it's, yeah, it'll go beyond the bounds. So I would, yeah, I recommend sticking to that if you can. <coughs> And I don't know if that factors in the judging as well. I'd have to follow up on that. But if you, if you have one that's outside of the norm, there's always a risk somebody marks you down because it looks different. But what? Yeah. Do you know what criteria to judges that are mainly looking for? I, I don't, in, I, can just, I speak in broad terms. I don't, I don't know what the actual rubric is. Um, but I know it kind of follows along what we talked about. I mean, obviously, you're going to want to have you know an organized poster. Um, the idea being that it's you know it's easy to follow. You know, there's a clear message being presented. Um, with a poster, you're going to have a little bit more room than some of the slides we work with. But you just also don't want to make sure that the poster is not like just jam packed with stuff on it so that it, you can't follow it. Um, and I don't know the ins and outs is what the percentages are, but I think that's kind of what you're looking at as far as how is my research organized. How is it presented on the poster? And then how is it presented verbally to the judge? Um, I think the same rubric there is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have that, how you're gonna be judged on how well you're engaging that judge in, in your project. Um, but they might not walk away with a complete understanding of it, but for that, that, that elevator pitch, they're, they're following you, they're engaged, and you're conveying your work in a way they understand. Um, that's kind of the broad strokes. I don't know the exact rubric as to what, what ways and what percentage but I think if you stay kind of in, in those realms, I think you'll, you'll do well. Anything else? Those are good questions. Those people that are gonna watch on the video later are gonna thank you, because you asked some good questions. <laughs> Well, if no one else has anything else, we have the room for a little bit of time. If you guys want to hang out and practice, that's fine. I can hang out for a couple minutes if you have any more questions. Or, I mean, I'll give you some time back if, if that is necessary to you. Uh, don't forget, our poster lab is coming up on Thursday. It's on Thursday morning at 10.30. And it's, it's downstairs in 105A, which is that large space behind the coffee shop. Um, and I believe there'll also be somebody on site at some point this after on Thursday to talk to you or be available if you have questions about the actual printer poster because it's down there as well. So yeah, it's from 10 to 11.30 on Thursday. So, and it will not be me. It will be <laughs> someone from our IFITS department who has worked. In fact, she's currently giving the, the presentation for the undergraduate research conference as well today. So she'll have more practical applications as to how you put your poster together. Kind of what goes into that and i think she'll touch a lot of, uh, on some of the things we did today as well as how do you marry up what you put on your poster with what you're saying in your presentation she'll have some good tips as to how you bring those together as well so bring your questions on that front as well we'll expand on that a little more as we go into that um, as to how those two halves come together but please do come to that if you can if you can't we'll, we'll video that one as well and make it available but if you can be here in person it's great because then again you'll have the chance to network and ask questions in the room and really kind of be in that same realm with undergraduate students. So I highly recommend you being here in person if you can. So anyway, thank you for your patience. I know we got off to a little bit of a late start today, but thank you for sticking with us. Um, if there's any other questions, you, you feel free to email me as well. If there's not something I know, I'll get, I'll get a hold of our, our director or I'll push you her way and she can ask her any kind of questions you might have as well. But, um, and good luck at Showcase. I hope to see some of you on Thursday and if not, I'll see you at the Showcase for sure.